Welcome to the Wedding Obsessed Podcast designed to help you plan your dream day. I'm your host, Adriana, and each week I'm joined by the wedding industry's top professionals, celebs, influencers, and friends who share tips, trends, advice, and mistakes they've made so you don't have to. This is the Prenup Podcast. Did you know that 70% of couples live together before getting married? Not to mention the average age of marriage is 30. So odds are by the time you're getting married, you probably have all of your essentials. And registry really lends to getting those items that you need, those first time home items. So when you go on a Zola or a Bed Bath & Beyond, RIP, you know, they're really recommending kind of those staple items that maybe you already have and you've accumulated over the years. So fortunately, Elizabeth Bexler, who's the founder of Spenny, an alternative registry site, is really changing the way registries work, which is so necessary. Registries in general are just kind of so outdated, but they're a traditional part of the wedding process, and I don't think they should go anywhere. And with people like Elizabeth and companies like Spenny, I can guarantee that they're not going anywhere anytime soon, but you'll have a much better experience in your process because you're going to be able to get items that you actually want from mom and pop shops and boutiques from places that you love. Elizabeth and I talk about all things registry and how to curate specific items for your wedding so that you can actually have fun through this process because the registry process can be so boring. But fortunately, we have Spenny to come in and save us. Welcome to the Prenup Podcast, the founder of Spenny, Elizabeth Wexler. <laughs> I didn't have time to do my hair, but I don't care. Oh, I'm having a nightmare of a hair day. I tried to give myself a blowout and like most <laughs> things, leave it to the professionals. It's just not totally not my day. <laughs> so Elizabeth, you're a very busy girl. You're a wedding planner. You are an entrepreneur. You are the founder of the registry company, Spenny. Yeah. Do you have a social life? <laughs> um, I do. Yes. I feel like very lucky because my job is social so I'm around people all the time and my clients become my friends but yeah I have a core group of friends from college that I see a lot Love it. Um, I have a bunch of neighbors that I'm friends with and most importantly I have a husband and we have two nephews and a big family that we like to see all the time so we prioritize family a lot recently Awesome. And you have your foster baby, Coney. Well, we have our dog, Penny, and our foster pup, Coney. So you have so two dogs here. in your house right now? Yes. Penny's less social. She's probably sitting in a corner, minding her own business. <laughs> <laughs> so when is, I always ask wedding professionals this, like, when's the last time you hung out with your husband? Because I feel like it's so hard in wedding season. And you're yeah. in New York, so... You know, for the Northeast, it's May, June, September, October, like prime peak. Yeah, um, it's a, actually a great question. We, I, I worked the last few weekends, so we probably got went out for dinner last week. We definitely like to do like a, a, we hung out Sunday. I was so tired Sunday. We went to a bar and just in the neighborhood. It was so beautiful out just to like sit outside and enjoy the weather and literally came home and fell asleep like I was so tired so I was like it was a bad hangout because I just totally failed Um, I'm sure he understands though in in these months it's like not entirely possible yeah and he he has a busy schedule as well so it's a great question we I don't know you you know (laughs) another planner who has like 20 years experience on me said I asked her what the trick to this industry was and she said a really supportive spouse to take care of things on Sunday morning when you're too tired to oh totally oh my gosh that is sage (laughs) advice truly so how long have you and your husband been married what's your husband's name Eric Eric hi Eric so how long Um, have you and Eric been married (laughs) we almost two years beautiful beautiful when's your anniversary December 23rd Oh, oh my God. That's probably so gorgeous. I love a Christmas wedding. And it's nice for you because it's out of peak. So did you and Eric live together prior to getting married? Yes. So it's an interesting statistic. And when you and I spoke last, we touched on it a little bit, but 
I find that most brides that I talk to, most couples that I talk to, have a really hard time with the registry process specifically just because a lot of times they already have their own staples that they've kind of accumulated. And 70, 70% of couples live together prior to getting married. And the average age of marriage is 30. So that's the average age. And, you know, most people, if not living with their significant other, have lived on their own. If they haven't, God bless them. If they're like living with parents or someone's putting them up, kudos to them. Love that for them. But for most people, that's not the reality. So did you have a hard time when you were registering for your wedding, just kind of like figuring out what you actually need? Yeah, it's a really great question. I think it's also like New York is very particular because, and, and San Francisco and some other cities are like this because real estate's so expensive. A lot of people go from living with like three people or a roommate to living with their spouse or their significant other or their fiance. So, um, and other people don't, other people live alone. But mm-hmm. at that point when you're moving in with your significant other is usually when people are investing in things like parachute linens and Casper mattresses and a nice coffee machine. Um, And so, yeah, I see that all the time. I think especially with like changing e-commerce habits and shopping on Instagram and all these things, people are investing in those things. And there's so many companies, like you walk around Soho and there's like citizenry, there's so many great companies that target you all the time. So uh, that's actually why I built Spenny was because I felt like, all right, we have the basics. Now, how do we complete our home and how do we invest in things for the home that like really help take the home from zero to a hundred or 50 to a hundred or 99 to a hundred. So yeah, you might have your coffee maker, but you have like a collection of beautiful mugs, cappuccino cups and espresso cups. Like what are your habits together as a couple? And when you're living together and actually like doing the day to day together and you're, and you're entertaining or you're having people over or you're, um, like just waking up and having a coffee with your partner, what are those things that you might be missing and don't have and how can you create rituals together and invest in things together for the home that aren't just like the basics so we I mean not to be like you have to register for spending but it's really built as like <laughs> you know go to like your name brand registry go to your Bloomingdale's go to your crate and barrel get your basics and then come to us and get all the really cool things that'll help make your home stand out and help make your home more of a a home for you and your partner um but like we have couples registering for like I mean I just saw a gift come through right before this call for a beautiful Janori fruit stand Janori's like this incredible oh my god I saw on your Instagram story I'm obsessed I need it yes and like and it's not for everyone. And that's that's an investment piece. It's a six or seven hundred dollar fruit bowl. Sure. But we have beautiful. I mean, on the lower end of things, we have beautiful linen napkins, and you can mix and match napkin colors, or you can save like all your you know fall colors, and then have a spring collection. And if this isn't resonating for you, like you're a much more like industrial person, then you probably just need like a set of coffee mugs that isn't the free shit that you got in your lobby when you moved in right 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 <laughs> exactly honestly, in my case with eric we had like we had an a comcast mug we have the mug from the building and i was like yeah this is like working but like you know i don't want to have people over and have these ugly mugs yeah you want to elevate so like you know when you live with roommates or on your own in your early 20s as you know ladies i I think it's very girly and glitzy and like maybe, you know, a lot more feminine. And then, you know, there's guys who notoriously have like maybe just a navy sheet and like sports (laughs) posters on the wall. And I love the navy sheet. (laughs) Sorry to call the men out, but like, don't they all? It's so strange. Why do they do that? I don't know. Like the, I don't know why the dark sheets give me heebie jeebies. Me too. a black sheet a brown sheet i i just makes me feel like a dirty hotel in vegas totally it's like anytime i'm looking at a hotel whenever we're going anywhere i'm like the only thing i really need is a white sheet like i just need it to be clean i need to know it was bleached yeah i love a white i mean i'm all about whites but um but like 
we have beautiful patterns and I think there's one brand on Spenny called St. Frank and they're obsessed with pattern play like that is the core of the company um I mean literally they'll like show these beautiful imagery of like 20 different textured and patterned pillows and mix and matching them and if you if you have the vision for it great but if not all whites are a really really clean look yeah definitely and like you said you can kind of layer with that too and you're really when you're registering a lot of times on like you know a bed bath and beyond rip or like you know a zola or the knot you know you're kind of looking for you, you find yourself like what do i need and they yeah. will promote these kinds of gadgets like you know i have a handheld tabletop vacuum which is great i ended up registering for it because i was like what the hell do i need like i have all my stuff jake and i lived together for five years before we got married but you really want to if you are like me you or 75 70 percent of couples who live together you know you want to focus on elevating your style and creating something that's like merging you yeah. as a couple together yeah yeah, I agree. And I I definitely don't ever want to push somebody out of a zone that doesn't feel like them. Like sure. it should still feel like you and your home should be your safe your safe space, your comfort zone. And when people come over, I think it's really important that like it's it's quite obvious that you're in Elizabeth's home. Yeah. Um but I I oh my gosh, I was watching Love is Blind the other day and the, they did. I'm like super behind, and they did a tour. And this guy, in his apartment, had solo cups and paper plates. Like you open the drawer or whatever, the shelf in his apartment, and he doesn't even have glass. He just has paper plates and solo cups. And you know, for whatever point you're at in life, like I can judge that, whatever. But you should. Your home should be like a place that you respect, that you are excited to show off to people and that most importantly like you can come home take your shoes off lay down and like feel relaxed totally and so for some people that's like chaos and a lot of color and clutter and for some people it's super minimalistic and you know i always try and talk to people about like their habits and their and their preferences and i have a really like like clean white simple apartment and that's because I'm I have so much chaos in my brain like I need to come I need to not think about anything in my home so yes yeah yeah it's it's so true and I think you know a lot of times couples feel like they shouldn't register for certain things like if it's a design element or you know something decorative I've heard a lot of couples say well, well that's decor we can't really register and like no why why not why why wouldn't you register for yeah. a decor item? I agree. I think there's no limits. And we're really trying to like reframe the entire process around registry. So like we think of it in this really specific home category. And I think yeah. that's super totally accurate. But also like I want to get Peloton on Spenny. Yes. We, and, and I want to get uh, Lululemon on Spenny because – you should invest in things that'll help you as a couple. And if that me, if your help as a couple is like taking tennis lessons and having matching tennis outfits or having away bags or like um, hiking gear for your honeymoon, like it, I just, you know, I think we're so pigeonholed into what registering means and it's like the keys and arts and kind of over that, you yeah. know? Oh, so am I. I mean, personally, when someone I love gets married, I want to gift them something that will bring them joy in their life, not something they felt obligated to get or that they felt pressured from someone. There's a lot of judgment around a registry. I was talking with someone recently about um, just, you know, protocol for, for gifts. And, you know, for, for us in the Northeast, like monetary gifts at a wedding is like the standard. That's what people do. But in in the South, it's like, it's faux pas, you know, you don't, you don't give someone a monetary gift. It's like, well, yeah. why not? That's what they, that's I, think what they want. I think it's also generational. True. Um, I definitely hear from certain generations that are like, I would never give money. I would, I think there's a lot we could say on that subject for sure. But personally, I always say everyone loves a monetary gift, but you need to give your guests options because you want your guests to feel comfortable gift giving 
And so options and always, of course, there's guests that will give you a check and that's great. But we, I mean, when I look at a registry, I want to make sure there's not, you know, 10 gifts that are $1,000 each. I want to make totally. sure there. some people like to mix and match and have some lower end and some higher end and get like, or a whole cocktail set and have cocktail napkins with glassware and a bottle opener and a, you know, and a wine chiller. And, um, and so we really want to make sure that the registry kind of makes sense and gives guests like an open-ended option. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for- I'm sorry that I look like I'm stroking myself. It's just my dog. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. I didn't even notice. I, it does not look like it. I was like, ooh, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No, it doesn't look weird at all. But, you know, if someone, let's say, you know, I'm registering for my wedding or my shower and I have a few items that are maybe on the higher price point, do you have any recommendations? Maybe there's like a group of my girlfriends who wants to gift that together. How would you recommend them kind of going about that? Well, first contact us and we'll, <laughs> that's Benny, and we'll, you can literally text us and we'll guide you through the entire experience. But typically what we see, what's the most streamlined with your friends is have one person lead the cause. Don't involve 20 people. It's just going to get super complicated. Yeah. If it is like the Janori fruit bowl, let's say, like I just mentioned, and you want to split it with five other friends, have one person do it and you guys split it at the end. So that's the easiest way to do it. And um, I always say like, I mean, I'm a planner. Too many cooks in the kitchen is just annoying for everyone involved. So streamline it, have one person organize it and move on. Yeah, definitely. And, yeah. you know, it's it's something that I'm a traditionalist at heart and I I love the idea of a registry and especially with a company like Spenny and, you know, the, you're a trailblazer in this sphere as is like a Sarah Mark Lease of Honey Fun, like just looking for different ways to incorporate a registry in a way that makes sense for a modern couple. So, yeah, it, we've not we've not gotten it. Like the registry has been around forever and ever. And until, it's so yeah, it's, it's so, so it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. So everyone I'm sure is very grateful to you for kind of giving this, this niche experience. And it has to be noted too, that you are the curator of these items as well. So everything is going through you. Yeah. I would love to talk about that a little bit. So we, um, you know, I've been working with couples for pretty much a decade, uh, and I got married myself. I, I'm a planner also. We haven't talked about that much, but I'm also a wedding planner. Um, so I, like, live, breathe, die weddings. Like, it's my whole life, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> I just heard how sad that sounds. No, I'm with you, girlfriend. I also have a wedding. <laughs> but... Um, so, I, you know, I started Spenny after years of hearing complaints around the registry process. The websites that exist that we all know of for what for registries all have the same stuff as Crate and Barrel, Williams, Sonoma, and Bloomfields. There's nothing interesting out there, and people are just registering out of obligation. There's this term that keeps getting thrown around in my world called conscious consumer, mm -hmm. and I think it's so real. Like people don't want to just throw money at a big company anymore endlessly. Totally. People want to know where their stuff is coming from. So what we do at Spenny is we uh, partner with retailers and e-commerce brands and we help them become registerable. So we give them access to our marketplace and couples can discover these brands through the experience of wedding registry. Um, so it's very important for us to support the brands, to keep them in business, to help them find a really simple way to join a registry or get access to couples. The, some of these brands don't even like know of the registry space as a means of customers. So it's really like we talk a lot about the couple, but it's really the, the brands for us are like our, our real partners in the whole thing. Um, and one other thing I, I just wanna say in case couples are listening to this, I think there's a lot of pressure at the beginning of engagement to like make a wedding website and do a registry and find a venue and get a date and just save the dates and like and it's it's really hard because you go from the day you get engaged to like being on you're on cloud nine maybe you're surprised with friends and family like whatever your partner has in store for you that day it is cloud nine usually <laughs> and, 
And then you have this like quick reality check because friends and family are like, when are you getting married? Have you looked at venues? What are you thinking? Like, you have to tell me I'm pregnant and I want to know, you know, and it's like, holy shit, like this is too much. Yeah, calm down. And, let me enjoy it. Yes. And everyone works at their own timelines and, and it's hard. And so I think people get the, stuck in this, like, I need a wedding website and I need a registry. And then people carelessly and thoughtlessly add things to their registry that they don't actually need. And I'll tell you about some of those things. One of Please. the biggest ones, like, I always see people registering, like, on Zola for a garbage can. And I'm like, dude, if you need a fucking garbage can, buy it. Buy a garbage can. Yeah. You're, that's you're, not... Our whole population here, you are planning a wedding. Weddings are expensive. If you can afford a wedding, you can afford to buy your own trash can. Do not subject a wedding guest of yours to buying you a trash can. Like, if, and, and I'm saying that as a euphemism. There's actually really cool trash cans out there that like compost and are great. And like, I love that. No, of but course. I mean, there's so much like industrial product out there that's like, go on Amazon and get it for yourself. You yeah. don't need that as a gift. Um. So anyway, my back to the whole thing of my brand. My advice is live with your partner as you are and register slowly like build it up as you're like oh i broke this glass i was having a glass of wine it fell and broke register for new glassware like you it will dawn on you so quickly because there's this thing that happens in the engagement period where you kind of grow up really fast because all of a sudden you're like seeing a real-time list of like friends and family and who you want invited and you're really thinking about money and you're entertain people for the first time at your engagement party perhaps or at your shower and you're really you're growing up and you're like oh wow like i do need coasters like i never knew i needed those but i yeah. do need them so that i i think people just need to allow themselves some grace to like live a little register slowly and the most important thing i'll say is like there's these key moments there's obviously your engagement there's then your shower your um or your engagement party, your shower, and then your wedding. And as long as you kind of keep maintain a registry around those and add and delete as the year, year and a half goes on, you're fine. But there's no need to like throw on a hundred products on day one. It's crazy. I absolutely agree. Someone's Sorry for keeping. my fever rant. No, no. And I love something that you said um, jogged my memory about something. So, you know, as as a planner, you know, I, I call myself semi-retired now because um, I only do like up to five a year. But throughout, you know, my career in planning and still to this day, people will come to me and say, like, I'm not engaged yet, but I know it's happening or, you know, a it's going to be happening soon. And they'll start to like pseudo plan their wedding ahead of time. And kind of just what you said, like taking it slow through the process like jog these things as you're coming like okay if we were to get married when i get married like this is kind of how i would want to curate the home not to get like too ahead of yourself but if you are the kind of person who who likes those items and like you know what's going to be coming just put in your notes app like, this is these are things that i want or go on spenny and like you know star your your things see what you like i couldn't agree more i i really truly like this doesn't need to be said but i'll say it the ring is a formality. I see all, I mean, I barely see a couple that like was so shocked over it. I mean, really it's like most couples that I work with have talked about the future, have a sense of timeline around like marriage and kids and nonsense and that. And, and whatever, whatever part you're at, I don't think the ring is really like such a shock to most people I, I i don't know do you agree do you see it differently oh i 100 percent agree i i think that you know i will say that when when my husband proposed i was like not shocked out of my mind we lived together we've been together for like five years by the time he proposed but we hadn't ever talked about it so in the moment i was surprised but i was like yeah we're gonna like be together forever we're probably gonna get married it's not you knew, like you knew in your head totally totally so yeah i don't think if you have been together for a good period of time or you've spoke about it before like it's such a huge surprise and shock so i don't think there's anything wrong with you're planning for your life like that's it's part of your life yeah and i think that's just like a function of 
time and um and it's not we're not living in the 70s like the times have changed dramatically and I totally think you can plan ahead I mean I, yeah. I'm a planner like of course I would say that but of course I plan everything you know I'm like psychotic but I just think that I mean if you go on like ring concierge comment for example it's like there's just so many people that are planning the ring and they are not engaged. Yeah. And like, for me, that is okay. Oh, I am a hundred, like who, what woman who is in a relationship doesn't have like a saved Pinterest album or Instagram album of like my, you know, my favorite rings. Like everyone, everyone does it and they plan. Why would this be any different? Exactly. So yeah, I think um, times are just really different. They definitely are. So, you know, we are we are changing the way registries are built. But because you are you're a full time planner, like that's still like Spenny's your baby. So you have like two plus full time jobs, which I mean, yeah. you're a superhero. So God bless you for that. But because, you know, being with couples is such an integrated part of your life, you do have a first hand knowledge of what they're looking for and what they're interested in, what they want, what they don't want. Um, so just kind of on that topic, what are you seeing that your couples are really, really wanting or loving either a certain item or in a specific category? Yeah, that's a great question. I think I'm seeing um, way less like towels and bedding than I expected when I, a year ago when I started this. Um, and much more like the decorative stuff. So a lot of barware, barware is huge for us. So like really cool glassware, tinted glassware, or like we have these really cute, like ombre colored coupe glasses that do really well. Um, and then cocktail napkins, coasters, shakers, decanters like anything for the bar i think it's very cool to have like a styled bar Definitely. so all of that um couples are always registering for like vases and decorative bowls um and then also functional bowls so i think what happens is people are living together and starting to entertain and they're like oh wow i need like trays and bowls and platters and that stuff seems so silly and like, eh, I don't need that. I live in an apartment. Who cares? But, like, the reality is the second you have people over, you're like, I have nothing to put this cheese on. And it doesn't right. even need to be fancy, but you need something. So, and then with every platter, with every bowl, you need serving utensils. So you need cheese knives and um, tongs and, and related things. So Absolutely. I've seen a lot of that. Um, yeah, I, I think generally people are exactly, like, buying sheets before they move in with their partner sometimes upgrading around the registry often not the other thing is we have this um amazing italian cookware company i i, I mean the pots and pans are like amazing truly it's called sardell and they do really well i think people are once they've like cooked together a bit with their partner starting to invest in more cookware yeah Definitely. Oh, it's, it sounds so beautiful. I just went to a little like um, demonstration and um, it was for cooking items and it dawned on me. And I was like, I really like don't have so so many things. Like I thought I had everything for my kitchen, but especially like you said, like whenever I'm entertaining, I'm like, I want something that I can, you know, lay hors d'oeuvres on or put, put out a really beautiful spread and sometimes I'm like, I, I just wish I had like a better decorative piece. Um, and I know we already talked about like the garbage cans being something that maybe, you know, people shouldn't register for. But are there anything, are there any other items or, you know, things that people really maybe focus on too much when it comes to registry that's like, don't really even worry about that? <laughs> I think it's so dependent on the couple. I mean, just generally, I think there's a lot of like trendy gadgets that, that people get sucked into buying or registering for and not using. Mm -hmm. Like you gave the handheld vacuum. Yeah. And I, I mean, whether that's um, useful for you or not, but I, I just feel like a lot of the trendy gadgets, like it's a one and done kind of thing. Like I see the weird, like I don't even want to name anything, but um, you know, like, 
a potted plant that's like self-watering or just something like super trendy that is probably cool but my recommendation is really invest in long-term pieces for your home things that you'll say in 20 years or pass down to another generation but say that you got it for your wedding i always think that's really really special and then like we talk a lot about like um things that are traditionally you know marketed towards a bride um but i also want to say there's like you know, tons of man cavey stuff on Fenny's that like we have dominoes, so these really cool like loose side domino sets and um like leather bound books and just things that are a little bit more like less like twelve China. So, yes. Like, and I, I think it's important to uh involve your partner in some of these I think it can actually be really fun. It can like open a bottle of wine and do, and look together. Um it's very hard. I always say like one partner is usually much more involved than the other in the entire process. Yeah. And it's hard to find things to involve the other partner in sometimes. There's a few like, key, obviously the tasting and the cake tasting. One of those can be the registry, believe it or not. Absolutely. Um, I think it's definitely something you can do together. Yeah. I actually just did an episode with um, Suit Shop, which does like, you know, all kind of formal wear and suits and whatnot and you know I noticed at that time I was like god I really don't pay any attention to grooms I'm so bad and I think a lot of you know especially people who are getting married or you know friends of the couple a lot of times like oh it's about the bride it's about the bride but you know grooms do need some love too like this is their day and like you said it could be a really fun part of the process doing that together like hello, it's your home together. Like, it's your life together. Don't you want to choose these things? And Yeah, totally. And I, you know, and even if it's, if there's two brides, if there's two grooms, whatever the case is, I'm still seeing one party is much more involved than the other. So use it as an opportunity to involve your partner in the wedding. And I always say, like, you need those points. You need to involve them because... You're just, it's just going to be a fight down the road. So get them involved in something a little bit in the beginning. And for me, I always say they don't care about save the dates probably. They don't care about like some of the vendors you're going to bring them in on. Yeah. But bring them in on the registry. It's a good thing to do together. Definitely. Definitely. And it's like, it's always fun. It's like, you know, going through catalogs. It's always just like, yeah. ooh, this is like, I would love this. But in this oh God, case, you just gave me such a great idea. I should make a catalog. You like should. Catalog. Oh my God, like a holiday catalog. I yeah. would eat that right up. I, oh. I should send it to everyone who signs up. You should because it is like there's nothing more gratifying. I just, I always remember my American Girl catalog coming before Christmas yeah. and I would go through and I would circle everything and to this day, like, I'll still get, like, Granum Road and some some different yeah. catalogs, like, the only people who still send them. And it's just so gratifying to go through. And it's – with Good a register I, – I love that idea. I I will I will need to request one. <laughs> oh, my God. It sounds like a lot of work, but it's a great idea. <laughs> it is. It is. If I can think of a way to make it easy, I'll, I'll send you some options. But um, There's, like, a, a company out there that, like – makes I bet yeah there's a company that I actually work with Dazzle Prints they do um my planners they're awesome and they're they always like give discounts and they do all different kinds of printing so I'll send you their info but um that, that would be really fun even if it's not this season like maybe in some time ahead but with you know with that it's with a registry specifically it's kind of like that idea of going through a catalog, except you're probably actually going to get these things. Like, that's the exciting part. Yeah, it, totally. It is fun. Okay, so I wanted to play a little game with you. <laughs> so I guess it's not as much of a game as, you know, just a couple of fun questions. But okay. we're going to start with... Um, just some, are you into pop culture at all? Are you like celebrity weddings? Maybe. Okay. Okay. So out of this year, do you have a favorite like high profile wedding? Even if it's maybe not something that would be on the forefront of everyone, but maybe someone who was like featured in Vogue Brides, Vogue Weddings or someone like that. Um, hmm. 
I'm not the best at this. I'm okay. a celebrity. But, yes. I mean, I loved Sophia Richie's wedding for a lot of reasons. I thought it was, like, over the top as I would expect. But, but I really enjoyed it. And I thought she marketed it really well. And I think we need to talk about that. I love the fashion. I love how she made it an opportunity for herself. I, I, I just, yeah, I think I loved that wedding. Um, that was like her I coming out not, party. I did, yeah, it was her coming. It was her, um, what do they call that? Um, her, like a debutante ball or yeah, like, debutante. like not that she wasn't known before, but whoever is in charge of her, like her management or her PR, like the perfect way to do it and like just like you said the styling and everything and just coming out in that way was just fabulous yeah um i was mesmerized by bridget's wedding that happened last month gorgeous Um, probably because it was in new york and i'm a planner in new york i knew a lot of her vendors um one of her caterers was like the company i used to work for so i saw from a lot of yeah i saw from a lot of like different channels um, I, I don't follow her or I did it. Now I do. Like, yeah. I, I really wasn't aware of her until this. So she clearly did really great marketing this wedding and so did her team. Mm-hmm. Um, I also enjoyed the, fa- I mean, I'm not like a super critical person, but obviously like hosting a rehearsal dinner on the streets in Soho is one of the most like iconic things that we've seen in this industry in the last century so i didn't know you could do that like what are the permits involved with something like that crazy but um but it uh, you know it's risks like that that i just have to applaud her team because i constantly try and do things that have never been done or you know on, on my own scale or um work at not venues that no one thought of doing a wedding at or just like thinking about the industry in a different lens and i i really was just so impressed by her planners for pulling that off. I thought it was flawless and iconic. Shout out to the bar. Love the bar. I know. I I was a bar the bar fan before I knew who Bridget was also. I didn't even know what it was until now. <laughs> yeah, her stuff is just like, she's so chic and gorgeous. And she has that like Alex Earl factor that even though she is so fabulous and like has all these great things, she's so relatable in a way. It's... It's bizarre. I don't know how she kind of juggles both of those. She's a very great influencer. She is. She really is. She really is. Okay. Second question I have for you. I know you said you're not like super pop poultry, but it doesn't have to be a celebrity. It could be anyone. Uh, do you have a dream couple that you could curate a registry for? Ooh, I like that question. Um... I feel like I have my dream couple doing it right now. They're just perfect. Like, they are exactly the kind of couple I want to find on Spenny. Like, people that are that really are careful with what they're bringing in their home, that are super thoughtful, super design-oriented, kind of fed up with, like, over-consumerism of, like, the crate and barrels of the world, and have, like, such nice guests that are just buying tons and tons to the point where we're at. And literally, I just spent, was on the phone with her adding on more products. So that's, like, you know, not that that's a famous person, but that's, like, who I look for. Um, it's the ideal. Yeah, it is the ideal. For sure. All right, Elizabeth, last question before we get to our after party, which we finish every episode with. So, obviously, you and Eric are happily married, and you've already done your registry, But if you were getting married again today and you had to create a registry, what's the one item that you would put on? I know exactly what I would put on. I would put on like Janori coffee cups and Janori dessert plates. I think it's like, you know what I love at a dinner party is you just serve people like let's say on your everyday dinner wear, but then to bring out like a really fabulous coffee cup of just like coffee I think it's just so great so um when I registered we Spenny didn't exist at the time but we actually registered for Hermes coffee cups which I I like but I wish I did something a little bit more thoughtful because I just honestly at the time was like oh these are nice and I want something nice um 
And so that's what I mean by like the thoughtless registering habits. Like I was totally a victim of it as well. And you're a wedding planner. So if you're falling victim to it, I mean, most people are. And this is not to knock Zola. It's a great platform, but it does have your essentials. And as great as that is, it doesn't leave a lot of room for personalization and decorative items and artisan items that you're going to be finding in a local boutique. So you should be able to just easily link both those registries on your website. It's the simplest thing in the world. And this way you can have your cake and eat it too. You can have those really specialty decorative items as well as any essentials, additional essentials that you might need. And I agree. Like spent, we have tons of couples that have registries on Zola and Spenny. Tons of couples that register on Crate and Barrel and Spenny. Sometimes there's things like big box retail things that people really want that we don't have or vice versa. So, um, yeah, I think like people are always like, can I do multiple registries? And I say, you got to do what's right for you. Like if you're not finding what you need from one, go to another. And that's why we have a wedding website where all the information lands. Okay, Elizabeth. So for the final round of questions, we, we end every episode with an after party and they're just some fun wedding questions, kind of like a lightning round. So question number one, what is your top recommended honeymoon destination? Uh, so many good ones. Um, I mean, I'm jealous of every client going to South Africa. Can I say that? Or anyone doing a safari. It's been a dream of mine always to do that. So I would probably say that. Or to go to the Great Migration. Um, that's a dream of mine, to do safari and see the Great Migration. Yeah, any, I mean, like, I'm jealous of all their honeymoons. After their weddings, I'm, like, going on to the next wedding. And they're, like, in Zimbabwe. <laughs> well, we got married in COVID, so we were kind of restricted. But we... We did do a fabulous honeymoon. We went to um, a part of Mexico. We love Mexico. We could go to Mexico at the time. So we went to like the West Coast of Mexico to a place, to a few properties. One of them, the one that was like very outstanding was like, it's called Quixmala. And it is a place of, I mean, once in a lifetime opportunity. Truly like, if we're talking about five star hotels, it's an eight star hotel. Like, if I said to Eric, I'm thirsty, someone would be right there with a glass of water. Like it was, uh, it's like a crazy situation. You have to look it up. It's so cool. I will absolutely look into it. It sounds fabulous. Okay. Next question. What is your dream wedding cake flavor? Oh, love this. Well, I, I'm, a, I'm a chocolate person, so I have to lead with that, but I recently had a cake that was strawberry lemonade flavor. Like it was strawberry cake with lemon icing and it was unreal. So now I'm like, and I, by the way, at every single wedding, I shouldn't say this because sometimes I don't, but I don't really eat dinner. I'm too busy. It's not the right time. So I have speeches going on, but I really like to have cake at the end. Like I pretty much always try to have a piece of cake. Yeah. Dessert is the best part. I hate carrot cake. <laughs> Like, if you choose carrot cake, I probably am secretly like, ugh. Red velvet and, like, cream cheese frosting doesn't do it for me. Me neither. I'm not a red velvet girl. So either, like, fun. oh, I love Funfetti. Oh, Funfetti is the best. That's actually the most popular with my podcast guests. Or Oreo or caramel sea salt. I have a sweet tooth, if you can't tell. Caramel sea salt, dulce de leche, anything in that realm. Um, I like espresso. I hate fruity chocolate though, and and some fruit flavors surprise me. I'm right there with you with the sweet tooth. Now I'm craving something sweet. Next question: What song do you need to hear at a wedding? Oh, that is a good one. It's more like what songs do I not want to hear at a wedding? Oh yeah, which ones do you not want to hear? You know what song I love right now? Love, like I hear it, and I'm no matter what I'm doing, I, my hands are near. I'm dancing. It's it's like I follow rivers, like. I, I follow, I follow you. Like, I think it just is so fun. It gets people dancing. It's very, like, at the moment. I love it right now. But, like, there's certain songs. Like, Mr. Brightside, I'm gonna, I can't. I can't. I, I cannot. I, everyone requests it. I just, I cannot stand it. 
I don't know. I think there's a lot of songs we hear all the time, like Fine Seal Deliver, those Bruno Mars songs they play over and over. But I will say, like, I, I also appreciate Bruno Mars because it's so intergenerational. Parents like it. And there's not much, like, modern music that is. So, yeah, I like it all. I just hate that whole Mr. Brightside thing. I hate any, like, screaming crew of men, you know, like, in a huddle. I don't like that. Oh, my God, that's so funny. One of my guests, Mike Cassara, who's a wedding photographer, said that that was actually the song that he would pick to play. But he pointed out it makes no sense because it's a song about someone cheating. So it's just so funny that people go so crazy for it at weddings. Okay, Elizabeth, final question for you. If you could impart one piece of wisdom or advice on any couple getting married, planning a wedding, what would that piece of advice be? Yeah, I think there's a lot of pressure for people in the beginning, like I mentioned. I think that people just get sucked into this like Instagram hole of pressure and it's terrible. And I think it's really important that people take things at their own pace, follow their budgets, do not overspend in places that will you'll regret later. Meaning don't overspend on venue in the beginning and leave yourself nothing for vendors. I see that all the time. Um, but like take it at your own pace and it's your own wedding and do not follow the things you see on Instagram because you think that's trendy and that's what you should do. Listen to your gut, listen to your partner and take things at your own pace. I know that's right. And you better listen to her because she knows what she's talking about. Elizabeth, thank you so much for sharing all of your insights about wedding planning in general and of course registry with Spenny. Where can everyone find you? Um, you can find me on LinkedIn at Elizabeth Wexler and nowhere else by that name. You can find Spenny at www.spenny.com. That is S-P-E-N-N-I-E. At, on Instagram at let's underscore Spenny. Um, and then my planning business is Emlyn Events, E-M-L-A-N Events. And I'm Elizabeth Wexler and you can always find me online. Thank you so much for listening to the episode today. Please like, review, rate, subscribe, follow, whatever the things are. It's really, really helpful. If you do support us, there's something in it for you too. You'll have the opportunity to win a free prenup bridal prep planner. We give one away every month. I have the directions on how to do that below, so make sure you check that out. Thank you again for listening. Happy planning. See you next Wednesday.